Hi there and welcome to the channel and the first thing I have to do is apologize for being away for a few weeks. I had the most awful flu and more importantly I lost my voice and no voice means no booktubing. I am however feeling much better today and my voice as you may hear has returned. So I thought I'd come back and share with you my birthday present which has arrived today. I went and picked it up. Here it is. It is as you may have guessed, books, but one of the books is rather special. And that's why I thought I'd do an unboxing and share the moment with you. Actually, it's one book and a magazine, as you'll see. Now, I've already uh, opened the box because you don't really want to watch me try and fight my way in for three or four minutes. I'm not very good at this kind of thing, but the materials themselves, I have not looked at yet. So. Here we go, what have we got? Oh, cardboard, bubble wrap, and the items. There are two, let me take them out. So, this smaller one is actually a literary magazine from the 1940s. Shall we start with that? And then the other one is a beast. And this is actually the very special item, as you'll see. Okay, the small one. Um, inside. Hmm. Here it is. It's this Horizon. What's it described as? A review of literature and art. This was published in 1942. And I can read out the contents. They're printed on the front. Three poems from Crave Coeur by Louis. Aragon, The Lesson of the Master, A Day with Tolstoy by V. Why are these names all so difficult to say? Some Russian author there. I really did pick the wrong ones to read out. But the most important contribution is the next. Sickert at St. Peter's. Yes, it's Denton Welsh, one of my very favourite writers. And this, I believe, is one of the earliest pieces he had published. And how does it begin? It's all about visiting a painter, Sicker, at his house. And Sicker is really very strange and very grumpy. And at the end, he says to Welsh, don't come back, which is quite amusing. So I had been in Broadstairs for months, trying to recover some sort of health after a serious road accident. My doctor, knowing that I was an art student, tried to persuade Sicker to come and see me, but he wouldn't. I was told that he stormed off down the street saying, I have no time for district visiting. Well, there you go. Sick of being grumpy from the off. I'm very pleased to get hold of this. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to the uh, main attraction. Oh, what's this? Another receipt or invoice, whatever they're called. All right, now. The big moment. Ooh. Wow. <clears throat> what can I say? I'm looking at this. It's... Wow. Firstly, it's quite a big book. As you can see, a hardback, a slim one. But, wow. This was published in 1958 after Welsh's death in 1948. So, some 10 years after that. And it was put together by some of his friends. There were two editions published in that year. One is even more expensive than this one, but this is still well worth having. It's I Left My Grandfather's House by Denton Welsh. I do actually have another copy here. This is a reprint from the 80s. Sometimes you'll see this online for more than 100 US dollars, when actually it should only be about 10 US dollars. So if you like this one, you know, don't spend too much on it. However, this one that I've bought for myself is much more expensive. Now, let me show you one of the attractions here. Oh, inside there's this insert. I didn't know that would be here. I left my grandfather's house, an unpublished account of a walking tour. Oh, that's so nice. It has in the insert um, a little e extract and on the front, you have one of Denton Welsh's illustrations of himself. 
Oh, that's that's wonderful. I, I didn't know that would be there. But the book itself has these plates, these colour plates inside by another artist. Obviously, this was a put together posthumously from um, a sort of 10,000 word or so entry in Welsh's journals. And it's an account of a walking tour around the southwest of England and most of the places I've lived in or visited myself. And it's a wonderful wonderful account oh something else in here oh leslie jones drew the illustrations for this book as a result of retracing denton welsh's footsteps i have to show you how that's put together look you've got a little little card there see little flap ah oh, i'm making a new discovery every second with this with this book it's published by the lion and unicorn press 1958 like i say oh this is a little different. Oh, it's the introduction, but it has a title. Ariel in the Tree Trunk. I believe this intro is by a lady named Helen Rhoda, who was an artist also, and a friend of Welsh. So she was instrumental in getting this published. And then the book begins with another illustration by Leslie Ann Jones. And these are, as it says, the result of retracing uh, Welsh's journey, Staining High Street. So that is one of the villages that Welsh passes through near the beginning of his journey. And I believe I looked it up and I found that one of its most famous residents was a good friend of the Satanist, Alistair Crowley, and was perhaps living there at the time that Welsh walked through. Perhaps Alistair Crowley was visiting. What a thing to contemplate. Okay, let's move forward. Oh, there are black and white illustrations here too. I only knew about the colour plates. And now if we go to, oh, beautiful Norman church there. Okay, where are we? We are in, I, I don't have the reading glasses on, so I'm not going to try and read the place names. But we go through and yeah, just more of the same. So I don't think I need to show you any more than that really but i have to say of all the things i could have purchased for my birthday this this yes pretty much the best thing i could have chosen actually absolutely wonderful oh all right i'm going to spend some more time with my gift oh wait a moment there are two more things that i've noticed while I've been making this video and I do want to share them with you. They're rather interesting. Firstly, at the back, there are a number of letters from Welsh to Helen Rhoda. So that is a nice touch. You won't find those in a regular edition of I Left My Grandfather's House. And finally, because this book was privately published and printed, we have this notice, oops, sorry, on the back stating that this book is one of only 200 illustrated copies and I own number 14. So there we have it, we really are done now. I can't really put into words just how thrilled I am to own this amazing book. I did not expect it to be in such spectacular condition. It looks as if one as if it was really just published yesterday. Wow, whoever owned it took thoroughly good care of it. And now it's mine, the best birthday present I think I've ever received, even if, as I said, I had to pick it out for myself. Okay, that's enough from the disappointed man. It's time for the customary farewell. I really shall return very soon. Now I'm fully recovered, but until then, be safe, be strong, nanu nanu.